hello everyone so welcome back to my channel and uh, in this video i will be mostly talking about the uh, model serving part from ml flow registry so in my last video what i have covered basically the important thing was like uh, how to track the experiment and uh, how to do the model versioning using ml flow so these are the topics covered so uh, today again i will like uh, do the recap so basically i uh, will see how to create the conda environment and then do model training uh, so for this i have written different python functions so i will quickly go through and then i will show you like uh, how to uh, track the experiment okay because this is a prerequisite for further steps so here in 1 2 3 these three points i am not going to spend much time because i have already created a detailed one hour video explaining each and every steps so if you are new then please uh, uh, watch that video link is uh, present in the description box but uh, let me start the next steps basically that is a part 2 video okay so here i am using ml flow version 2.0.1 that is the latest one uh, released around 2 weeks back so we'll be using that one and uh, some places there are uh, slight differences in terms of like using the key certain keywords from the previous version so i will just highlight that also okay so uh, what are the main uh, topics i'm covering basically so after uh, you have recorded the experiment um, and artifacts so what are the next steps like uh, you need to register model in the model uh, ml flow model registry right and then i uh, will see the transition basically so by default when you register a model in the model registry it will be in uh, default that is a none stage then you can uh, uh, transition them to the staging or production or even the archived from the production so these are the three stages available and then we'll see uh, how to load model from ml flow registry and do the prediction so here we'll see like the single event prediction as well as the batch prediction and then uh, the last but the most important one that is the model serving so here we'll start a ml server and do the serving uh, from the ml flow model registry by creating the rest endpoints okay so let me start and i would suggest uh, you also uh, follow the same steps what i am going to execute so that it will be a hands on session for you as well okay and wherever you feel okay uh, you're not able to uh, understand so just pause the video analyze few seconds or even uh, go back and then restart uh, from that point and then uh, so that's how it will be uh, easy to understand okay so let me start so what i'm going to do i'm going to open uh, anaconda prompt so i'm going to the uh, folder where i have kept the project files okay so i am inside this folder so here uh, if i just go to this location so here you will see so i have uh, present only this ml flow model serving that is the jupyter notebook and this is the uh, previous one which i used uh, in my previous videos okay for experiment tracking so uh, that explanation you can anyway get in the youtube videos and then uh, some uh, images basically so some uh, these snippets i have used uh, to explain certain things within the notebook i will be talking about okay so nothing else so i just came to this uh, location and from here i can do jupiter so before that i need to activate the environment so i have already created the environment so in last video i have explained how to create the environment conda environment but uh, uh, no worries uh, i am also writing the code in the jupyter notebook so let me open that one okay then uh, you can see the code so ml flow so it's a two point just a minute ml flow 2.0 okay so this is the uh, environment name i have created so now i'm inside that conda environment so from here i can open jupyter notebook so you can type this command and it will open the Jupyter notebook because I'm inside that location. So it will directly open that folder. But for you, what you can do, you can create a blank empty directory. And from there, you can open the Jupyter notebook. Okay. And then at the moment you come here, then you will see uh, different environments available here. So I'm going to use this MLflow 2.0. So in last video, I have used MLOps. So in that video, I have used MLflow version 1.27. So that was the available that time, but uh, now to be expect they have released the latest version. So I'm going to use this one. Okay. So here, from if you go here, then you can open the new notebook like this. Okay. And here you can start executing your code. But uh, I have already written the code, so I will just uh, going through uh, so that it will save a lot of time. But I will explain each and every line. Okay. So no worries. Yeah. So again, uh, these are the topic covered which I have already talked about. 
so you can read it later and these are the four main components of ml flow basically the very first one is ml flow tracking where we ex track the experiments and then ml flow project it is nothing but just the compiling the whole source code into one uh, directory and that is named at ml flow projects and then we have ml uh, flow models basically that's where we deploy the models in different serving environment okay and then ml model registry so in today's talk we are going to talk mainly about model registry and then a little bit about ml flow models okay so in more detail i will be talking in my next video that ml flow models okay but today's main focus is model registry and this i have already talked in previous video okay so let's start uh, now so um, this is these are the steps uh, you can use for your conda environment creation so like uh, conda create hyphen n you just provide the environment name and then provide the python version because we need the base uh, python environment there and then ipy kernel okay so that um, that environment will be available here uh, i mean here okay so for that we need to have a ipy kernel installed as well and then we need to attach that as well so let me tell you so the moment you execute this command it will take certain uh, minutes basically and then you activate the environment using conda activate environment name whatever environment name you have given and then a third step add newly created environment to the notebook as kernel okay so uh, the moment you run this command so your environment will be available here as per like mlflow 2.0 or whatever name you give Okay, so that um, you can assign that kernel to your notebooks. And now uh, whatever dependencies you need, you can install. So the very first one, like I need to install the notebook, pip install notebook so that I can use Jupyter notebook uh, command there in the uh, command line. So whatever I have used to open this directory. Okay, and then these are the uh, important uh, libraries which you will be needing uh, to execute this notebook. Okay, so the moment you do pip install mlflow, it will by default install the latest one that is 2.0.1. Okay, so I can show you the installed version here. So how you can check. So mlflow hyphen hyphen version. Okay, or you can execute this command in the command prompt as well, but make sure uh, within your environment because inside your environment only you have mlflow installed, not the system level. Okay, so if I execute this command, then yeah, it is showing mlflow version 2.0.1. Okay, so if you have older version, then some places you might feel uh, okay uh, some keywords are not working because mlflow has changed certain keywords which i will be going through uh, later okay but uh, make sure you are using 2.0.1 version that is the latest one to so that uh, all the uh, chunks of code of this notebook will work okay so now let me start so this part i will quickly go through this is nothing but just the uh, functions i have created to train the basic uh, model Okay, basic classifier. So here again, I'm telling guys, so in this video, my uh, objective is not to explain how to train the model, but uh, explain the MLflow functionalities and model serving part. Okay, so let's quickly jump through that. So uh, uh, first method, I created a load data basically. So here I will be passing the URL and from that URL, I'll be reading the CSV file. And then I'm doing trend test split again. Here I'm passing the data whatever i get in previous step and then the target column basically what i'm going to predict basically okay so that uh, you can do x y and then the x is nothing but the independent variable that is the predictors and y is the target variable and then a famous like uh, trend as a split thing right you can do all these things then training basic color classifier i'm using logistic regression so here so the just initialize logistic regression then classify dot fit then it will train the model and then you can do the you can have the predict on test data function right so here you can pass the model and then uh, test data and then it will do the prediction and in case you want to do the, you want to see the predicted probabilities then this is the method you can use that <clears throat> okay and then the immediate next method is like you want to uh, see the metrics basically so again you can pass the truth values and the predicted values and the predicted probabilities in some metrics, we need the probability values. Then you can generate the accuracy score, precision score, recall score, log loss, all those things. Okay. And then uh, you can return those values because I will be needing those things to uh, record uh, as part of experiments. Okay. And then uh, if you want to plot the ROC, you see curve, then you can have this method. And then similarly, you can plot the confusion matrix like this. Okay. So these are the basic function. And from here onwards, uh, I'm going to call those uh, functions one by one to have uh, to basically. Uh, see what kind of data set we have and then train the model then record the experiment so let me um what i can do uh let me uh restart the kernel and clear everything okay restart and clear output so that i can freshly execute and you can also execute a log with me okay so if i just execute this one then you will see the ml flow version that is 2.0.1 and then let me quickly execute these things of course here you will not see any output because this is just a function definition i'm not calling anything okay 
yeah from here onwards you will start seeing the output so now here in the very first uh, step i am just uh, defining the url so here i have placed my rs uh, csv file there is a data file and i'm calling that load data function and printing the first five rows so the moment I execute, so this is how your data looks like. So this is the famous Irish data set where we have a uh, flower like a sepal length, sepal width, and petal length and petal width. Okay, and the class of the flower. So there are three classes available. So different Acetosa, uh, Virginica, and one more basically. Okay, so there are three classes, and based on that, we want to do the prediction. So of course, there are three classes means more than two, then it is uh, becoming the multi classification model. Okay, then I'm just, uh, doing the trend test split. That's fine. It will return X train, X test, uh, Y train, Y test. Then I'm doing the model training so i'm just training the basic classifier here so that's fine it will train and of course it is giving me some warning because uh, i'm not defining a, a certain hyper parameters uh, like number of iterations and all those things because i'm training a very basic classifier okay so here i'm not going to uh, tune the model and all those things okay so that in my previous video I have again told like uh, recorded the basic classifier and again i have hype uh, like tuned the model using certain hyper parameter and then recorded that again if you are interested in that part then you can watch the previous videos okay but in this video i'm going with a uh, basic classifier because the concept will be same okay and now here uh, if i run this then uh, you will see the output basically so here like a uh, predict on test data so i am passing the model whatever i got in previous step here as part of this training basic classifier output and then we have the test data okay so if uh, uh, for your uh, understanding uh, i just print how your uh, these things look like so here you just see x test dot head if i do then you will see okay this is how x test look like okay so here we don't have the target uh, variable available because target is something we want to predict right you can uh, just print all others uh, you can see okay so that's where like uh, if i pass the x test uh, data here in the model then uh, i am calling the predict function then it will predict me like uh, so for every row it is predicting like for first row of data it is predicting iris satosa for second row as well third fourth fifth and then sixth row it is predicting iris virginica like that okay and then seventh row as well then versicular okay like this it is predicting and then similarly if we want to see the predict probabilities then um, you can have like uh, the this will predict the predict probability so like this okay so for first record um, it is uh, predicting like uh, uh, iris citosa because uh, this is like uh, around 99 percent probabilities right so like that so no not 99 percent it's 10 to the power minus 7 right so this one so around 96 percent 10 to the power minus 0 1 right so 96 percent probability and then it is 0 0.03 so like like 3 percent right and 0 0.00009 right it's up to the seventh uh, a decimal place right so that's where a higher probability is like 96 percent the first class is iris cetosa so that's where it is predicting if this is the more then it will predict the second class if this is the more then it will predict the third class so this is a normal model building right and predicts so nothing uh, great till here okay then i'm printing some metrics if i execute it then print it so it is this model basic classifier produced with the 93 percent of accuracy precision recall is as well 93 recall is as well 93 and entropy is 0.17 okay and then if i print the confusion matrix then um, yeah it is printing like this so it is a multicolor uh, sorry multi classification model so there are the three classes basically okay and this is the uh, classification matrix so you know all the i'm expecting so till here you already know okay so now from here onwards ml flow work starts okay so i have created again a function to record the experiment so this again i have explained in my previous video i'm quickly touching it again so what i'm doing i'm importing ml flow so i'm just uh, doing ml flow dot set experiment so here i need to provide the experiment name which i'm uh, taking as part of argument here from this function okay and then i'm doing ml flow dot start run here i'm passing the run name okay that will also uh, came as a argument okay and then here i'm what i'm doing uh, i'm recording certain parameters basically okay then second step i'm recording certain metrics like accuracy precision then if you have certain artifacts in terms of files in the system basically then you can record that uh, confusion matrix if you have rcc plot then you can record that as well okay whatever you have you can record like this and then if you want to tag certain things okay so dot set tag then tag one you want to define rs classifier tag two you define logistic regression tag three and blah blah you can define okay and then mlflow.scalar.log model you can pass your classifier which you got above 
and then give that a model name okay so that's it so this is how i am recording this so guys here there are certain important things okay so let me first execute it so i'm just uh, defining it so it is not executed yet okay the moment you call then it will execute okay so but uh, to record it your ml flow server should be uh, on okay it should be active so what you can do so there are multiple ways to start ml flow server so the basic the default one is using ml flow you okay but when you start your mlflow server using mlflow ui it uh, uses file system as a backend storage and when you use file system as a backend storage then your model registry functionality is not available i'm underlining this if you are using file system as a backend then you will not get model registry functionality okay so let me show you how it will look like okay so right now if i just run this local host 5000 then there won't be it won't open anything okay because mlflow server is not on okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to open another anaconda prompt and from there i will go to that uh, my registry where my file system and everything is there okay and let me open the conda let me activate the conda environment as well otherwise mlflow will not be available okay and from here i can do mlflow ui the moment i run this then it will uh, start mlflow server default in uh, 5000 port okay now if i refresh this thing then it will open okay so now here you see under experiment we have only the default one there is no other experiment because i have not executed that experiment function yet and you will see again in if you click on model you will get error okay here it is clearly mentioned model registry functionality is not available okay so because i'm using file system as a backend but in this video i'm going to explain the mainly the model registry functionality that's where you need to have a certain backend storage kind of mysql or sql light or postgres like this okay so for that uh, you can uh, read this uh, link what all uh, backends are supported in this video i'm going to use sql light okay so only this url will get change if you are using postgres or mysql or any other you need to pro uh, provide the connection string like with username and password to connect to that db okay so i'm going to use the sqlite one so what you can do uh, you can stop this mlflow ui server okay i just do did control c in windows then it will st stop it in a moment yeah it is stopped and now you can run this one this line of this command okay so here i'm going to use the see here it is defined ml flow server i'm going to start backend store uri is nothing but sql light ml flow db and then default artifact root is dot artifact okay and host is like this so, so let me run this thing so if i run this thing yeah now it will run immediately yeah it is uh, serving on this so now if i uh, refresh this again yeah so now if i click models then it will not give me error okay it navigated to models folder but it has not yet any model available under this because we have not registered any model that's what we are going to do as the next thing okay so now we did till here so now uh, the time has come to register or uh, create a first experiment and register that as a model okay so what we can do we can define experiment name so i'm defining iris classifier and appending the date time here date basically here so that every if uh, tomorrow i'm coming then experiment is created with new name basically okay so you can avoid this part that's not a problem and then i'm giving a run name here and then calling the exper create experiment this above method this one whatever i've created here okay so here, if you will see uh, create experiment, I'm passing experiment name, I'm passing run name and run matrix, whatever I've got above and then model that is a classifier and then class, uh, confusion matrix dot PNG. Okay. The moment I execute this part, okay, what it will do, it will create a new experiment named IS classifier and with appended with date. Okay, it is saying it is not exist, then it is creating a new experiment. If it exists, then it will simply um, create new version on top of that. So now if I go to experiment, now you see yeah, this experiment got created. 
okay and if i go here then here you will see all the metrics recorded everything okay and here you will see these are the artifacts so like uh, requirement.txt nothing but the your, your library dependencies and similar you will get in conda.yaml as well okay and then we have model.pickle file okay so now here you will see uh model is registered as an artifact and you can use this uh, right side bracket code to predict this and here you will or you also see like register model so there is a manual option also available to register the model but uh, till now like not some functionalities are still not available in the ui you can of course do register model but uh, at least i didn't find the further light like, how to create a new version uh, from that registered model using ui okay so that's where i'm going with the code uh, perspective coding approach that's what i'm going to explain okay but before registering the model let me show this part okay how to predict this so uh, you can simply copy this code you can do this in spark as well but you need to have uh, that uh, PySpark installed so i'm going with simple this uh, data frame approach okay so you got the new experiment and then what we can do we can simply replace that with this okay so that we get new run id so this is the run id of this latest uh, created uh, model and here i need to pass the x data x test okay so whatever the test data and then it will simply do the prediction so if i run this then see so these are the predicted classes for each record okay so that's that uh, okay and now the next what is next thing basically as i said so Till now, we simply uh, registered, uh, not registered the model. We have simply recorded the artifact, that model as artifact. And then from that uh, uh, SQLite database, we have uh, like loaded this model lo from local and ran this uh, prediction. Okay, that's it. I've not registered the model. So now next thing, what I'm going to do, I'm going to register the model. So there are various ways to register the model in model MLflow model registry. The very first one, basically, this one, same way. Here, I'm just defining a function, create experiment and register model. So these are the same arguments which I'm using. Okay. And then uh, mlflow.set experiment. So here, before that, you need to set the tracking URI as well. Okay. So this is very important if you are using uh, that uh, SQLite or any uh, of backend. So if your MLflow server, MLflow is installed in uh, some of the server, then you need to give that server a path here, that host path basically. Okay. I'm running it in local host. So this is my uh, uh, host basically. Okay. Then set experiment, then run, run. So these all things are fine. Only the change is here, this one, this line. So here, what I'm doing, mlflow.sql.log model, I'm providing the model name. So, and to register the model, you simply need to pass the registered model name. So that is a basic classifier or here I can give iris classifier. Okay, because I'm going to register the iris classifier. Fine. And if you see the in the previous function, so here I have logged the model, but I'm not given the registered uh, model name. So that's where it will simply log as an artifact, but it is not registered the model. Okay. But this time it is going to register the model as well. Okay. So now let me execute this part. Okay. And then I'm just uh, uh, giving experiment name and run name. And then I'm going to call this about this method. Okay, with this parameter. And now the moment I run this, so before that, let me show you, okay. So what all things are available here? So we have only one uh, uh, experiment record here and there is nothing under model, okay. The moment I run this, you will see one version created under model as well, okay. So now let me show you, okay. So I'm going to run this. So guys, if anywhere it is not clear, just pause and think for a minute, okay then you will understand or even you can go a little backward then restart your video from that point then you will understand okay uh, because i need to explain so i'm going in one go uh, but if you, i what i suggested you also execute the same line of code so it will take certain time to type basically then you can pause the video you can execute and then you can again restart so that's how you should do basically okay then you will see the exact thing exact things happening at your end as well Okay, so that's the ideal way of learning. So that's what I suggest basically. But again, it's up to you. It's your choice. Okay, so let me ex um, execute this part basically. So the moment I execute this part, then you see here, uh, experiment with name iris classifier method one does not exist. So creating a new experiment. Okay, successfully registered model iris classifier because we are registering as well. And then uh, below, uh, this is just time taken and all those things. So now if I come here, okay, and I go to the experiment. So this iris classifier method one. 
so this method is created and here you will see it is registered as well because here the first one we have created we simply uh, logged as an artifact we have not registered so that's where here you see sklearn is mentioned okay and here if i go in the previous one here register model button is coming okay but in this one this the latest one okay here you will see it is not coming sklearn it is coming like the path where it is registered okay so if i go inside that one these all things will be same okay so nothing to worry here and here you will see so this whole thing will be same but here register uh, model button that is not coming but it is showing okay model is already registered right so you can click here and you can go to the registered model detail okay from but if you directly come here then also you will see iris classifier version one is registered under model bucket okay and if you go here so this is here you will see version one is registered and this so this is the direct path if you coming from there like uh, from here so this one right so here so direct it will navigate till here okay so now you see iris classifier is registered as version one but still if i go inside this one version one so each stage is none right so we have not defined any stage whether it is in a staging or it is in production or it is in archived okay so we'll see that part as well but before that let me show some other methods of registering the model okay so this is the first method we have created experiment we have um, created uh, we have logged the model as the artifact then we have registered the model as well as a version one okay now what are the different uh, second method so second method is to use mlflow dot register model method okay so this function call we need to call so what it does basically after all your experiments runs complete and when you have decided which model is most suitable to add to the registry so for this method you will need the run id as part of the runs okay so what it does basically it it has broken the steps into step by step first you record your model as an artifact and then register that model okay here in this one it is doing simultaneously it is recording as an artifact and then registering as well okay so let me do these things step by step so if you come here just a minute you come here then if you go to experiment so the very first uh, uh, experiment which we have recorded so this so this is not registered right so now let's uh, copy the run id of this so this is the run id or you can also get from here this is the run id okay i'm taking this run id and just pasting it here okay simply and this i am registering this as the iris classifier 2 okay the moment i run this so that model will also be registered now you see here register uh, model button is coming and the moment i execute this part of code that will but run will go away so now this rs classifier 2 is registered so now if i go here okay i again come back because i need to do the refresh okay now you see here so here instead of scalar this is coming so if i go here so see here that register model button is gone right and iris classifier 2 is registered with version 1 so if i go here so now you will have two model registered one is iris classifier using method 1 we have registered and as iris classifier 2 using method 2 we have registered okay but we have not changed the stage yet so stage is none as of now okay let's see the third method as well and then we'll uh, go towards the changing the stage okay so now as part of third method what you need to do you can use the create registered model to create a new registered model if the model name exists this method will throw an ml flow exception because creating a new registered model requires a unique name okay so what i am going to do here so i am going to simply create a just a skeleton just a structure okay just uh, uh, without any link here and there just normal uh, model so what what is this basically doing here if you go to the ui if you go to the ui here and you are inside model and there is a create model button right so whatever you do from here i'm going to do same thing so guys one more thing i would suggest okay after watching this video you come to this ml flow and just do try to do the same thing using ui and if you get any problem just drop me a comment i will help you okay so today's video i'm focusing everything from the code Respect. okay so let me execute this line of code and it will simply create a new uh, model basically okay so now i created this one so basic classifier method 3 will be created okay so now if i go here so i run this 
So see, basic classifier method three is created, right? But without any version created, it is like uh, simply the skeleton, nothing else, no, no associated run, nothing is. So you, you will not see any run or anything associated with it. Okay, but if you open these things, then you will see here everything in the version one and then the source run, everything is available, right? But for that, nothing is. So we need to now attach a run to this one, okay? Against which experiment this should run, okay? So that's where what I can do. Uh, I can come here and come here. So, so maybe I can take this, this as a source, okay? So I can assign this as a source for that method three. Okay, so we need to assign one ID, right? So I can take this source ID, give this. So now this uh, basic classifier method three will be linked to this run. So that is the first one which we have created the very first. Okay, now if I execute this code, now if I you go again here, you come here, okay, and go to models. So here this one, okay. So this one is attached. The version one got created, and this is attached to this source run. Okay, the iris classifier 512. So this is nothing but the first one, right? This one. Yeah, so against this, we have two uh, models created now. Okay, so from here, if you navigate, it will directly jump to that version one, which we created previously. Okay, so basically this one and this one is attached to the same source. Okay, it's so like this, so same source, right? So this is the method three, how to register your model. So till now you've seen like how to register your model, how to create a different versions. Okay. Now what is next guys? So next thing is like we have now our models available within the model registry. So how we can load those models from model registry and do the prediction. So there are certain methods for that. Okay. So we have Python uh, uh, available. So you can import mlflow.python and then give the model name. So whatever model we want to use for prediction. Okay. So you can simply come here, you can go to models, okay? And you can take any one of them. So let's take this one, okay? Iris classifier. So this one I'm using. Hmm? So I will just define this one, iris classifier, okay? And by, def uh, by default, it, it has logged using version one, okay? Version one. Hmm? So you can, you can execute the previous chunk of code again like this. You can do this again, then it will uh, record version two. Okay, so not a problem. And this, what I'm doing here, I'm just defining the model URL. So like mlflow.python.load model. So using this, we can load the model. And then model URI is nothing but inside models. You give model name and then model version. So which we have defined here, okay? And then we simply do the model.predict, whatever model we are loading from here. So you pass the text data and then you will see the prediction output, okay? And if you want to see the predict, probabilities then Python one will not give you the uh, product prova this uh, predict prova function is not available as part of this okay this model <clears throat> so what for that you what you can do you can load model using SQL and API mlflow.sql and load model if you use this one then using this you can get the predict probabilities as well now if I run this <clears throat> then you will see the output okay so yeah so we have a batch of data like X text so for each record it is predicting the classes and bottom like here for each class, it is predicting the probabilities, okay? <clears throat> Sorry. So this is how it is doing the prediction. So we have loaded the model from the model registry by defining the model path, okay? So guys, execute it, take some time, pause the video and execute it, then you will understand, okay? So next uh, part, what I'm going to um, explain you, like see here, what I did here, I provided the model name from model registry, I given the model version. So whatever version uh, you want to use for prediction, but next thing is like what we want to do, suppose our certain models are in staging or in production for production deployment, right? So what we need to do, we need to change the stage of the them. So for example, you come here, you go here and you can change the stage. Okay, you can do this. But what I'm going to do, I will be doing same thing from the code. Okay, so what you can do, you can transition the stage. So I'm going to transition the same model, Iris classifier, version one and I'm going to change the stage to production. Okay. So the moment I execute this code guys. Okay. Then if you go to ML flow, if you go to ML flow and here inside model, then iris classifier. Okay. Here you see um, nothing is available. Okay. So now the moment I execute that part of code, then you will see here production. It will move to production and here you will see like instead of none you will see the stage as production okay so let me execute that part so uh okay i executed this and now this 
iris classifier version one is registered in stage as production so now let me go it again here and if i refresh here then see you production came here right so now this is in available in production stage so if i go to registered model here so now you see iris classifier version one is in production if there are multiple versions so here latest version will show and here whatever version you have made to production okay that will be available here okay so now you, that's fine so um, we made it to the production and now what we want to do we want to do the prediction using the model which is available in the production so we'll load that one so what you can do so you can define the model uh, name and here you don't need to define the stage because at a time in uh, production or staging only one model will be available right you just need to uh, define the stage so that is either production or staging okay and then you can simply load the model like this you can define the model name you can define the stage and you can load the model and you do the predictions similarly if i run this so it will again provide the predicted classes okay so this is the another way like so uh, here uh, i i shown you like uh, load the model using its uh, version number and then here i shown like load the model using its stage thing okay whether it is in uh staging or production whatever okay so now uh, this is again so here i just uh, predicted for a batch data and if you want to predict for a single record then what you can do you can just simply uh, pass the one um, record one row basically and then do this thing same thing okay so if i just run it then you will see one okay what is the problem here just a minute let me see Okay, iris classifier 2 is not available, right? We need to provide the correct version. Sorry, sorry, correct name, right? So now if I do this, then it will work, right? So that's where. So for this, uh, it is predicting as iris virginica and then the probability value is like this, okay? So for first class, it is this much probability. For second class, this much probability. And for third class, this much probability. So this is the higher probability. That's it. It's predicting as a third class. That is nothing but the iris virginica, okay? So this is how it is predicting. Now another, the most important thing has come now, guys. So what is that? Serving an MLflow model from model registry. So how to do the serving? So for that, you the see follow these certain steps because if you do little mistake here, then it will not run. Okay. So that's where. So before that, make sure we have already started this MLflow server. So don't do anything that end. Okay. What you need to do, just need to again define set tracking URL. If it is already defined, then no need to run it again. If it is not defined, just let it run again. Okay. So it if your ML flow server is installed somewhere, then you need to provide that host path. Okay. And make sure this URL. Okay. If you locally, then it is 5000. But if it is in some server, then that port number. Okay. Just um, execute this. Okay. And then what you also need to do, you need to set uh, environment variable in your system if you are running locally, okay? So what you can do if you are using Windows, then just execute this in command prompt, like set MLflow tracking URI is equal to this path. If you are using Linux or Unix, then you need to use the word export. That's it, okay? After you run this line of code, okay, from command line, then for double check, just open your environment variable and go to the system variable thing and just see this MLflow tracking URI is available here or not. If it is available here, then it is good. Otherwise, just rerun this thing, okay? And, and or you can manually add also, okay, in the environment variable. So because we need this, because next part, we are going to start the ML server for serving purpose. Okay, so for that, we need these things. So this is uh, like environment variable setting part. And now what you need to do within the environment, uh, you need to run this part basically. So here, this will uh, start a ML server. What it will do, it will just uh, predict the, like uh, start serving this model. Okay. So yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, um, because this I have moved to production. So now I want to serve this. Okay, so what you need to do, just copy this, okay? And open, so don't uh, do anything with these two uh, command prompt, okay? Just open uh, next Anaconda command prompt, go to that directory. Okay, and then activate your Conda environment. Okay. 
okay now see it got activated and now you can run this the moment you run this okay it will start an ml server okay and guys one two there are certain uh, important things to note here here make sure you change your port number you um, don't give 5000 other than you give anything which is not used of course okay so just assign some randomly one two three four here i struggled a lot basically i was just uh, mentioning 5000 again and then it was giving a conflict and there was i was getting some error okay then i figured out okay i need to give different port here okay so while learning we do these kind of mistakes that's fine but here i'm just telling you from my learning you just provide different uh, port number here okay and other thing here like uh, just provide the production and then the uh, model which is in production that model name okay if you want to give a certain version then instead of production you can give that version name okay and then simply uh, hit enter it will execute okay and now you will see uh, ran or not just a minute yeah now it is running so uh just wait for a second it will start serving at that port and localhost okay so now it is serving so now you see here it is telling serving on this so the moment it executed like this then what you can do it will by default so ml flow that ml server by default generate these endpoints okay for whatever model is available in production so make sure whatever port you have provided there in serving here basically okay this port so same port you need to mention here okay and now you can utilize those these endpoints for serving requests so what you can do you just define inference request so here guys uh, if you are using ml flow uh, less than 2 version 2.0 then you can give data here but in um, this uh, latest version they have replaced that to data frame records okay so you can pass this record here and then define endpoint and then simply do request.post you define endpoint then json data and then you can just execute let me execute it will give me the result uh, the predicted class for this record okay so these are the four like sepal and sepal width and petal length and petal width so that flower uh, category and then it will predict what flower it belongs to so just a moment let it run Yeah, so now you see uh, for this particular record, it has predicted Iris Virginica as a class, predicted class, okay? So uh, for uh, we have predicted for single record, we can do the batch prediction as well. So for that, we need the text data. So here, if you see, like we have these many records available in our test data. So for all of them, like one by one, this is one record, this is one record, this is one record, like that, we can do the prediction. Okay, so how we can do basically, same endpoint we can use, like uh, so we can load those values as a list text dot value dot to list and then uh, create a data frame records here and we can provide the that list here and then uh, you, we already have an endpoint defined for us and then we can use the same request dot post so like this if you just uh, re run this it will predict print the response that should be 200 that is success so just a moment it takes some time So now you see like a response is 200, right? So that is success response. And you can print the output as well. So it will print like the class for each record. So that's how guys we do the batch prediction, okay? So this is how we can do this model serving uh, by loading the model from model registry. So I hope uh, you enjoyed the video and we learned together. So that's it for today's class and today's lecture. And next thing, uh, in next video, what I'm planning basically. So I'll be creating an end-to-end. -end. So basically what happens once you deploy the uh, MLflow or uh, machine learning model, it has to be consumed in some or other application, right? Third-party application. So here, 
we have shown you like how to do the model serving using the endpoints which uh, ml server already creates but what you also can do you can group all those things in docker file and then create a uh, docker image and then deploy as a as a kubernetes application okay so that's where also you can um, define your own endpoints so similarly in next video what i'm going to do i will be deploying this uh, model with the help of a python flask and we'll create a, a like kind of one small application where web application where you will be uh, consuming this uh, model output and uh, showing in the uh, UI. Okay. So that I will be doing. And then again, in the uh, like uh, second next video, I'll be using the same thing with the help of fast API. So if you are new to Python Flask and fast API, then you can learn that part as well. Okay. So that's all for today's video. So thank you very much for watching. And I really apologize uh, for uh, like creating this video very late because uh, like uh, I promised last time in part one, like I'll be releasing uh, this part two, but it got delayed due to various commitments. So sorry for that. And yeah, thank you all. Thank you very much. And please uh, one request, uh, if you're really liking my videos, then don't forget to subscribe my channel and share with your friends who is preparing for some machine learning. Um, things. So thank you very much.